All right, main event time. Um, Acclaim versus originally Speed and Darby, but Darby Allen got taken out. Just two on one. Sting for Steve Sting in big trouble now. These guys have almost felt the, the fate. They know they can't afford to lose this match. Two of them versus one. And they're the number one number one contenders in the tag division. They are and Bowens with the bullbox. Driving it into the face of Sting. And once again, Max Caster had the referee's attention diverted from the action on the floor. As much you may hate it, JR. It's great teamwork. It really is. <laughs> and they may be a few minutes away from ending this thing. Two seconds. I mean, think about what this would mean for the acclaim coming back into Washington, D.C. Sting's return to Washington, D.C. in the acclaim defeating Sting in this city. Now what? These guys have got... They seem like they've been outside a while. Max Caster standing on top of those steel steps. Oh! Okay, Darby Allen's back. Okay. He's back. He went flying oh, the crowd, over top of the ground, and Bowens crashed head first in the ring post. Darby returning stink to the ring. Darby needs to make a tag here to make it right. And Darby's the legal man. Allen, Allen has in coffee drop from the top rope. Oh. Darby Allen takes up the acclaim with the coffin drop. But you can see Darby still laboring from that beating before the bell. He's crazy. Oh, oh man. Call red. Call red. Two. Two. No. That couldn't get it done. You got to wonder what will. Max Caster struggling to his feet. He's looking for Anthony Bowens, but Bowens nowhere to be found. Coffin splash in the corner. Darby looking to deliver another one. Caster in trouble. Look at oh. this. A hanging guillotine by Darby. Looking for that submission is Darby Allen. And that's not something usually found in the repertoire. Darby. He's close to tapping. Oh, no. He's going to tag. Caster carrying the weight of Darby over to the corner. Made the tag out to Anthony Bowens. A wild matchup for a main event on Dynamite. Darby so resilient. Powerful thrust kick. Combination offense from the five-tool player, Anthony Bowens. Max Caster headed up top. The mic drop. The claim are going to win it. One, two, no. Sting there to break it up. Sting yeah. breaks it up indeed right on time. Yeah, you're not kidding. The nick of time. Caster taking the outside by Sting. So is Bowens. Oh, man. He went airborne that time. Great elevation on that maneuver. And the... Did do shoulder ring favors did Anthony Bowens. Sting still feeling the effects from that beating by the acclaimed. And now, over here by our announce desk. Sting, what has he got in mind? I don't know. He's got something in mind, though, because he's looking towards the ring. Oh! The next fight's on the outside. I don't believe it. They're standing and watching it on that one. I don't believe it. We've got to see it again. Look at this stage. Leaping up the stage to try to hit the the table. Sting doing all he humanly possibly can. Oh, pull this thing out of the fire. Bowens just ran into that top turnbuckle that he exposed earlier. Darby comes off the top with a stunner. Great call there, Excalibur. The turnbuckle missing. Big deal. And Darby Coffin. Drop and drop. That should do it. One, two, three. Darby on gets to win, folks. Oh, what a win. Here we go with it. The team of Sting and Darby Allen. Sting and Darby gets to win. Um. thoughts on dynamite tonight y'all let me know in the comments but yeah um dynamite tonight ah, i just kind of felt i want to say mediocre i mean it was a, it, it was an okay show i mean it wasn't that 
it wasn't that good. Um, yeah, these past couple weeks hasn't been good. But I understand we can't get shows like this every We can't get shows. We can't get very good shows every week. You know, sometimes there's going to have to be, you know, episodes like this. And we've been getting that for a couple weeks. Um, I think they'll pick back up either between now and February. Definitely February. They'll pick it back up. And, you know, the shows start getting good again and up until Revolution. <clears throat> but right now, it's just the main focus is progressing storylines for Revolution. You know. So, yeah. A couple things, you know, really, I'm really going to criticize. The, where should I start? The CM Punk and Sean Spears match. I'm going to shit on that. I was honestly looking forward to the match. Um, Spears cut a good promo on Friday, so I was looking forward to the match. And all of a sudden, it came down to a squash match. But yeah, honestly, I just don't know what they're doing with Sean Spears and AEW. I feel like he's just one of those guys that's getting lost in the shuffle, if y'all get what I'm saying. But it's like Sean Spears is in like this tug of war. I... I wouldn't say tug of war with creative, but at the same time, I can. Like, you know what to do with them, but at the same time, you don't know what to do with them. You get what I'm saying? And I feel like they don't know. They don't know what to do with them, honestly. Um, I don't know when he when he has a contract coming up. I don't know when his contract expires. He he's one of those first year guys, so I won't be surprised if he has a contract coming up. Um, it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting to see if he resigns with the company. Honestly, but he's one of those guys that that's getting lost in the shuffle. And once his contract expires, you know, I'm kind of interested in seeing him make the honestly make the jump to Impact. His wife works there. Why not? Let's see what you got. This guy could. I mean, he could be a world champion for the company. You know. But yeah, I feel like, you know, WWE didn't give him that platform and now AEW is just now dropping the ball on him. Another thing too, uh, Cody Rose, Sammy Guevara. They booked the ladder match for next week. Honestly, I would have saved it weeks later. You know, give it a little more build. Uh, honestly, why would you have, you have Sammy win back the title at Battle of the Belts? Just for him to drop it three weeks later. Because I got a gut feeling he's he's not going to win this match next week. You, So you're basically making Sammy a, 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 a traditional champion again? Is that what I'm trying to say? Like, it makes no sense for him to win the belt three weeks ago just to drop it back three weeks later. Um, but they, they put this win as TZ champion poorly. Um, I just, I feel like Tony Khan doesn't know how to book babyface champions. If you get, if you're trying to get what I'm saying, I feel like he he just doesn't know how to book babyface champions, honestly, in my opinion. But hey, don't no toxicity in the comments. If y'all understand what I'm saying, then you know go ahead, feel free, express your feelings. But yeah, why why would you put the ladder match next week? And Sammy did it, couldn't even come to work. This guy was all the way in Brazil doing God knows what. But I don't know what they're doing with the TNT Championship, honestly. Um, if Cody wins it, give give Cody a long reign. Um, honestly, I would have Keith Lee take it off him if Keith Lee comes to AEW, which I, I don't think Keith Lee should go to AEW, honestly. Um, Andrade, they got him in this Hardy family office stuff. I feel like Andrade is another one of those guys that's getting lost in the shuffle, to, in my in my opinion. And plus, it's, it's too much filler on these shows, man. You like you don't you don't have to get everybody on Dynamite. Not everybody has to be on the show, you know. And this is why this is another reason why Rampage can benefit off of being a two-hour show. 
So the people that can't get on Dynamite can easily get on Rampage and you don't have to add filler to, to these shows. And Rampage needs to be a two hour show, honestly. But yeah. Uh, what else? That's really it, to be honest. Those are my like my criticisms on the show so far. And you know, this is another reason why Tony Khan cannot sign everybody. You know, he shouldn't sign everybody. Because, you know, there will be guys that's going to be backstage. They're going to be disappointed on the way they've been booked. Uh, men, women, tag teams. They're going to be, not all of them is going to be happy. You know, some of them will get disappointed by their booking. They're going to get lost in the shuffle. And, <clears throat> yeah, you know, I just feel like some people are getting lost in the shuffle in AEW. And you don't know what to do with Andrade. You don't know what to do with Sean Spears. You don't know what to do with Leo Rush. Uh, yeah. You don't even know what to do with Christian. Even though he's managing the Hardy Boys. I mean, not the Hardy Boys. Jurassic Express. You don't know what to do with Christian. Uh, who else? Hmm. Yeah. Some of them. But honestly... This is why I fear, you know, honestly, this is why I fear Johnny Gargano and Keith Lee and Wyndham going to AEW. This is why I fear some of the time going to AEW. I fear Roxy. If she if she doesn't sign a WWE contract and she goes to AEW, I feel like they're just going to give her the, the dark and elevation treatment and she'll be stuck on there for months. Like, come on now. This woman was, 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 the, arena, was the first ever Ring of Honor Women's Champion. And you got her stuck on dark and elevation, and you're not gonna put her on dynamite. Roxy can give can give that spark to any women's division in the world. Roxy is one of the best at what she does in the entire world of professional wrestling. And you just have her wrestling on dark and dark elevation. Jay Lethal isn't no one of those guys that's getting lost in the shuffle. This guy was a former Arena Bottle World Champion, and you have him teaming up with Sunny Kiss. You have him on dark elevation, you got him on dark, and you have him doing nothing. Like, come on now. Jay Lethal is one of the best professional wrestlers in the world, and you got him stuck on dark and dark elevation. I don't get it. Uh, who else? Yeah, man. It's just some... Yeah. You know, I, I, I want to make pro wrestling better. You know, I, I feel like people should wake up and, you know, speak their voices and opinion on how they feel about the product of, of, of wrestling these days. Whichever company you, you watch, you support, you know, open up, speak up, man. Like, don't defend everything. It's okay not to defend everything. If you see something you don't like, it, it's your, you have the right to, to criticize it, you know? And I don't like these people in the IWC saying, oh, IWC's opinion don't doesn't matter. I hate when people use that tactic. Your opinion doesn't matter. I hate when people use that tactic. So, yeah. You know, I feel like everybody should have a right to have an opinion on something, on many topics, and yeah. But other than that, man, this episode of Dynamite was just, it was average at best. It was okay for what it was, and yeah, man. But other than that, I'm getting out of here. That's it. Uh, I'll see you guys Friday for SmackDown and Rampage. Like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys Friday for SmackDown and Rampage. Love y'all. Take care. I'm out.